I'm Aileen Mariai, one of the tutors on the PGD program. Welcome to the program. The team and myself are delighted to have you as our students. I am particularly going to look after the module title Educational Theory, Policy and Practice. For the first session, I'm going to share with you our expectations from the course. Hello again. I will now share with you some of the expectations that we have for you to be working at M-Level. As you may be aware, the PGDIP is equivalent to the first year of the ME programme that we run with the University of Brighton. Working at M-Level, you will find, is a challenge, but I can assure you it's equally rewarding. To be successful would require of you to develop two fundamental skills. Firstly, you're expected to work both autonomously and in peer-mediated environment. Secondly, there'll be plenty of opportunities for thinking and writing critically about issues related to education in general and to your practice in particular. Perhaps, unlike your previous experiences of learning, which may have been very much in a teacher-directed setting, at master's level, much of the learning happens in dialogue with peers and tutors. It is in the interaction with others, based on what you have read and experienced as a professional teacher, that your understanding will become more informed and critical. At M level then, you can expect to learn as much from your peers as from your tutors. There is, you will find, shared accountability for learning. And that is why there is very less of telling you what to think. Rather, the intention is to support you to create your own unique experiences and perspectives on matters that are professionally important to you. You Perhaps we'll find it destabilizing at first, but don't worry, this is because you may have been used to being certain of your opinion and of what you know. The aim of learning at master's level is not to give you certainties, but confidence about your own understanding and the ability to ask those questions which help you maintain an open-minded attitude towards new ideas and concepts. To be more specific, the aims of the PGD program are focused around firstly, encouraging the development of knowledge in some critical aspect of your professional practice. Secondly, to support teachers' autonomy as learners. And last but not least, to develop your capacity for self-assessment of your own practice. As you would have realized by now, these objectives focus on helping you develop specific knowledge in an area of education which is of interest to you. But more importantly, the course in its entirety is designed to assist you in developing the ability to think and write critically. This is a foundational academic skill which you will be expected to demonstrate in absolutely all your pieces of writing. Over the years I have found that many students come to postgraduate studies with a number of myths about the nature of the work they need to produce. I will speak about a few of them, but Rest assured that we are going to challenge all of them throughout the course. The sooner we explore these myths together, the quicker and more effective will your progress be. Myth number one. M-level is about mastering a large body of knowledge. You will find, however, that M-level learning is about developing in-depth knowledge of a particular area of education as a field. This area must be professionally relevant to you so that you can develop expertise and contextual knowledge. 
Myth number two. M level is about writing more and in a sophisticated manner. The focus is on developing a more complex understanding which highlights the multiple aspects of an issue. The key is to write simply and articulately to express an argument. The sophistication is more in terms of the ideas, not in terms of the language. Be wary of the charge of false sophistication, where the ideas are unnecessarily padded up with complicated language. Myth number three, M level is about citing as many people as you can to show that you have read. While regular reading is certainly a habit you have to develop quite early, tutors will be encouraging you to process very carefully what you read. There is an expectation that you will consider the ideas and arguments presented to you, but be sensitive not only to what the authors are claiming, but also to analyse why they are making those propositions and what is the evidence they are invoking. You thus cite the references in so far as they help you defend the arguments you are driving at. Citations, you will find, which are of informative value, are in that sense less significant than those which assist argument development. As you have realised, postgraduate studies seek to develop critical thinking skills. Have a look at the module outcomes and you will find that critical analysis runs like a golden thread throughout. But I am often asked by students, what is this idea and concept of critical thinking? Does it mean to be critical of other people's views because you have another set of beliefs? Does it mean to compare the points of view of different people and state which one you agree with the most? Or even does it mean to disagree with other people's views and opinions and arguments because they are writing, practicing in contexts which are remote from yours? Well, not exactly. Critical thinking is a process which requires that you Firstly, think very clearly and rationally about what you do or what you believe in. Number two, it helps you to engage in reflective and independent thinking. Thirdly, when you're thinking critically, it also means that you are identifying, constructing and evaluating arguments on the basis of their consistency with their own assumptions, their internal coherence and their logic, as well as their connection to practice. Critical thinking also involves that you solve problems in a systematic and autonomous manner. Analysis is also key to critical thinking. Analysis of the relevance and importance of ideas is also key to critical thinking. And lastly, one of the most important components of critical thinking is the ability to reflect on the justification that one provides for one's own beliefs and values. We then agreed that critical thinking is neither a matter of accumulating information nor is it a process where we only expose the fallacies and inconsistencies in other people's thinking. Critical thinking serves a positive purpose. It helps the scholar to acquire knowledge, improve understanding. That theories are created to help think more systematically about our practice, it enhances work processes and strengthens educational institutions. This is what 
postgraduate studies is all about. To enable professionals like you to take a fresh look at your practice and context, but more importantly, to empower you to effect self-driven transformation. What are we waiting for? Let's get going.